different places, different people from different places. Um, and I will be talking today about managing sponsee expectations and suggested approaches. Um, I, I, I assume everyone here is a sponsor. Is that yeah? Okay, that's great. Um, so I don't have any. I don't have any um, PowerPoint presentations or anything. I thought it'd be best to really talk it out um, and try and share my experience as much as I can. I'm not quite sure how I got roped into this, Natasha. But um, so basically, I think in terms of talking about sponsor expectations, it is a bit of a difficult one sometimes. Um, and I'm kind of going to go through with how I first started. So I was initially a sponsor before I became a sponsor. And my very first sponsor that I had, and this was really at the beginning of the sponsor journey that One NHS Finance has started. <laughs> and um, in the journey, um, when I met my sponsor for the very first time, he kind of said to me, what do you want? Uh, and I was a bit taken aback, really, because I thought that had all been sorted in the background. You know, they'd, they'd kind of known like why why we had why, why we were on this uh, sponsor sponsee um, relationship, and um, I didn't quite know how to answer, to be honest, because I, I wasn't quite sure, and he wasn't quite sure, because he was like, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing for you. Um, you know, I'm I'm really supportive of the of this sponsorship program, but I'm not really sure why or what you want from me or what you what I need to, to give to you. And that really took me back as a sponsor because I thought, well, if he doesn't know, how the hell am I supposed to know? Um, I, I'm, you know, this is going to be a bit like a, the blind leading the blind here. So it, it was really one of those first initial sessions where we just, neither of us really knew. Um, and we had to kind of work through it to understand um, what it was that I was looking for in a sponsor or what, what it is what I, that I was trying to achieve um, as a sponsee. So we kind of talked about it a little bit, um, came out of the call and, and I actually didn't feel very, I didn't feel very confident that he was actually going to be the right sponsor for me because I just thought, I, I just, I, he doesn't know what he's going to do for me. Um, he was very supportive, don't get me wrong, but he, I think he just felt a little bit lost himself. Um, and th this was way before when it, when it initially started. So I think we kind of like uh, fumbled through a little bit. Um, we only had we had three or four sessions and um, we rarely met to actually talk about my objectives or what I was trying to achieve. Um, and then he left and I um, went through another sponsor sponsor um, journey where I decided I need to look for another sponsor. And this time the journey was different. And that was because I'd reflected on it and thought, right, what do I want? What am I looking for, et cetera? And we had a bit of a conversation um, in myself with myself about what I wanted. And, and I kind of got to the point where I thought, right, this is what I want from a sponsor. Now, I think I then converted that around because I later on became a sponsee, sponsor, sorry. And it was just like, OK, now I'm on the other side. How do I set these expectations? What 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 do I need to do for my sponsee? Um, and I decided I thought the best way forward would be that whenever I actually met. Uh, so at the moment, I have one internal sponsee that's within MFT and I have an external sponsee um, and they're in one of the um, one of the other trusts down the down the road, not far from me. Um, and when I first met them, I think it was really important to understand what they were looking for in a sponsor really what what is it how how would i meet their expectations and the reason i wanted to do that is i wanted to understand their expectations so my real opening statement is always about tell me about yourself you know who are you where do you come from what's your history um and at the end of it tell me what it is that you're actually trying to achieve um and i and i get a bit of background you know like i we, we i make notes um i try to gauge what kind of a person they are what they're trying to get from this whole sponsor sponsee relationship um and in the end it's all about where are you trying to go so it's just a bit of a conversation um you know nothing formal nothing serious it's just you know tell us about and getting to know know the know the actual sponsee and then i do the same thing i tell the sponsee about who i am where i came from um and what my journey has been so far and the reason i do that is because they also need to understand who you are as a person and whether they can be with you, whether they can work with you, whether you guys are on the same wavelength um, and whether you can actually um, provide for them the relationship that they're looking for, the guidance that they're looking for. Because I think it's really um, it's really easy to say, yes, you know, I'll be there for you. But also, I think it's 
the, the timing or what it is that they're actually looking for is really important to understand because that's ultimately where the expectations come from. You know, what, what are they trying to, what, what do they want from, from an actual sponsor? Um, are they looking to shadow you? Are they looking to come to meetings with you? Are they looking to even think about coming to your trust and working within that same trust because, you know, they, they want to be part of something that you probably are already? Um, and how, or do they want to draw from your experiences? and use that as their kind of platform to think, okay, well, uh, you know, this is possible or this is how I want to do or explore options. Um, so it was, it was kind of, so for me, it's quite important to be able to just understand what that person wants. I mean, recently I had a sponsee um, who we had this conversation with and later on she decided, actually, you know, I don't think we're going to be the right fit. You, you, you're, you're not, you're not going to be what I think will work for me, which is absolutely fine. That was, the whole point you know we have that conversation um and i think once i've had that conversation with them and we i make a few notes and i share those notes with that person and i'll be like right you know this is what we've spoken about this is what you're looking for and then kind of as the meeting goes on i will also talk about okay well this is what i can provide or this is what we can think about doing um and it's quite helpful really because ultimately i think from a from a sponsor sponsor relationship journey things can always evolve, you know, like the expectations can also change as well from that perspective. You know, they, they might have a really set idea in their head when they come to you, like, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, I want to get to the top as fast as possible, or I want experience in X, Y, and Z. Um, how can you help me? But I think we all know that more often than not, it's not as simple as that. You know, there's, there's all these other little steps that need to be taken before you get to that point. Um, where they might actually be able to work towards it. Um, and it's really important to actually highlight them to, to that to them to say, well, actually, you know, it's not it's not going to be as simple as that. You might have to do this first or you might have to think about doing this first or have you done this or have you thought about this? So it's it's got to be. And I'm not saying that, you know, they're not. It's sometimes and I say this a lot is. You don't know what you don't know. So they're not really going to know anything until you actually talk to them about it. And sometimes we can assume things like they'll just know about it. But as an expectation, I think it's really important to just lay it out really, really clearly to say, well, actually, you know what, to get to this, you'll have to do X, Y and Z. But it's not as clear cut. So you might also have to do this or think about doing this instead. Um, so it's really important, I think, to be able to just um, be very clear as to where things can actually develop or progress or where it can't. Because the last thing you want to do, I think, as a sponsor is let them believe that what they're actually expecting is achievable if it's not. You know, it, it's meant to be a really honest relationship. And sometimes it might be talking about truths which they might not want to hear. So it's about managing that as well from that perspective to think about the fact that, well, I don't want them to feel that everything they say is realistic. It might not be. So how can we talk about it where we can actually manage that um, and not them not not let them feel that actually, you know, we're, we're letting them down in any way. So it's a bit of a difficult conversation sometimes. Um, but I've always found that I, I like to be as honest as possible with them and talk about this is what this is where you are. And if you want to get to this point, then you will have to maybe just do this for a little while longer or open yourself up to doing something which you might not necessarily have thought of and you might not like. And it can be quite difficult them sometimes because they're like, mm, I didn't think about that. I, I didn't I didn't think I'd need to do that. Um, but it's leaving them to the, just just think about it and reflect on it to think, OK, well, is this how you want it to be or is this how you want to want to go forward with this? Um, so I do find that just having that conversation with them initially um, and making those notes to get, OK, this is how you, this is where you want to go. Um, now, let's talk about that later on. Um, and then when we touch base back again, so we'll uh, the other side of the expectations is how 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 often do you want to meet? Um, some people might want to meet um, quite often and that's absolutely fine. But then it's that realistic expectation again as to whether you're diary as a sponsor can manage that you know can you can you can you honestly meet once a month for an hour or is that too much um and it's having that conversation where you can meet in between to go well maybe that might not work but 
this this will work. So let's do this. So um, you know, timing is really important, and and it's important to stick to those times. Um, you know, we can put things in the diary, and we can, it's so easy to say yes, that's absolutely fine. But then something comes on, and I think we all know that you know, finance is a really busy world. Things are always popping up unexpectedly, and it's quite easy to cancel on your sponsee. But if you keep doing that over and over again, you know, you are going to lose their trust. You're going to lose their confidence. Um, so manage that time. Um, be realistic with them in terms of expectations to go, well, you know, I, I might not be able to do every month, but I can definitely do like, you know, I'll, I'll block out some time in my diary every six weeks or, or, or when whenever it works for you guys. So be really honest with yourself and then about your timing. Um, and what really works for you. I, When I was a sponsee, I have uh, my sponsor um, cancelled on me so many times at the last minute where I got to the point where I just thought I can't be bothered anymore. Like, it's just not working for me. Um, and you just you don't you just don't want that. You don't want them to lose trust in you. You don't want them to think, actually, you know what, that they can't be bothered to meet with it. And, and quite often I, I know like as a, you know, it can be really difficult as a senior finance person as well. Um, trying to meet those expectations when you've all got, got all these conflicting priorities and deadlines, etc. But if you've signed up for this, then it, I think it's important to be invested um, and, and give them that time. So don't don't make it that, yes, definitely, you know, we'll be there for you, but then not be there, don't, not turn up. Um, so it's important to manage those expectations from a timing perspective as well and, and the interval process between it. Um, the other thing I found that they sometimes often will want to talk to you um, very suddenly about, you know, they're, they're going to an interview or they've got they've got um, they're writing an, an application or something and they just want some time to be able to talk about it. Um, and I usually like I will make myself free, like I'll be like, right, OK, that's absolutely fine, because we all know that applications have deadlines and, and interviews obviously have deadlines and, you know, the nerves are there, especially for interviews. Um, so I will they, they might message me and say, you know what, can can I just have like a half an hour or, or 30 minutes, or 40 minutes or whatever? I just need to talk this through. Um, and I will spend that time with them and then talk them through. And I, I think it's those kind of things where you're going to be there for them when they, they need um, they need you the most, really. Because when you, when you think about a sponsee and what they're going through, you know, they're trying to navigate themselves through a, re, a, a journey of, of learning, of development. And very often... I think, and and I, and I say this because I think I felt the same when I was a sponsee, is I used to feel really lost. I wouldn't know who to ask um, because people can offer you all sorts of advice, but having that exclusive relationship, I think, it really helps because you're like, well, this person's going to tell me the truth. This person's going to actually talk to me about it. They're going to make time for me and they're going to they're going to understand where I'm coming from. So it was it was kind of one of those where I would make sure that, you know, that person that I was giving them time to, um, we would have that time to go, right, OK, what is it that you're struggling with? Um, let's talk through it. And it's it's good for them because I don't tend to be able to. I, we all think we've got the answers. Sometimes we don't. Um, but I also make sure that when I'm talking to someone, it's all about asking them the questions to say, right, OK, let's think about this. How do you think this is going to be? Or if 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 I was to ask you this question, how do you think you would have to respond um, or what do you think they're looking for? So it's all about that. We don't we're not I, I don't tend to just give them the answers. I want them to think about it so that they're learning through the process. Um, and that's another expectation, I suppose, where they think as a sponsor, we're just going to have all the answers. And actually, that's not true. Um, but we can help them and we can open doors for them. We can give them advice. We can guide them. And that's the kind of stuff where we're actually managing to go, well, yes, I can help you. But I think, you know, in order to help yourself, that's really where it first comes from. You know, help yourself and, and that will work. Um, well, well, we'll kind of navigate through the situation together. So those kind of things really do, I think, come together. Um, and as you meet with the sponsee regularly, you'll both be a lot more in tandem and understand each other to say, all right, okay, well, this is what she'd probably want to talk about, or this is what they'll be wanting to talk about. Um, 
oh, we're going to be understanding this is your journey. So which steps are we going to take first? Or this or a series, when you have your series of meetings, it'll feel quite structured to go, well, yes, she this person wants to get to this point. So we're going to, we're going to devise a plan, which will mean that we have to do this, this and this first in stages. So I think that's really quite helpful um, to be able to actually make it a plan and bring it together. One of the, the ways I do that, I mean, uh, one nature's first, I'm sure it's on the website, Natasha, just um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a plan. Um, there's a the form that, the, that everyone fills in and um, I get them to fill that out. Um, and get them to write in it to go what is it that you want to do and then um they can share that with me and say right we're going to go through this but to do this we need to do this etc um and i have one as well myself um where it's a bit of a spider diagram really mine is um and i will go right well i wanted to do this so how do i get to this um and sharing that the sponsor and sponsor sharing that just means that you're both aiming for the same thing from an expectation point of view, you all know what you're working towards. So I think it's really helpful to have those as, as a bit of a plan and then that can be your working plan um, as you go forward. Um, I think I feel like I've done quite a lot of talking. Has anyone got any questions? Hi, um, is it Jazz? Yeah, yeah. nice to meet you, Rosalina. That was really enlightening, actually, seeing it from both lenses, being a sponsee and then learning about what went well for you, what didn't go well and how you then reflected on that as a sponsor. Because I think that's insightful in itself, isn't it? I was sitting here thinking when I've done this, although it starts off as a sponsorship thing, it actually becomes more of a sponsorship stroke mentoring stroke something else kind of conversation. And it's always really fluid. And I just sort of go with whatever the sponsee for a better word wants in that discussion rather than sort of sticking to a bit of a script that you might have defined right at the beginning when you thought oh it's sponsorship and I need to say this and I need to say that so that's that's been my sort of reflection on doing these things it, it just sort of morphs into something rather than yeah. being prescriptive in its approach yeah no and then you're completely right Jazz I think it does turn into a bit of a mentoring relationship as you go along um, but at the same time I think the, the fluidity works if the person doesn't feel like they're they themselves feeling like, well, actually, I don't really know what I want from the sponsor right now. Um, but the people are, are very much like um, they're, they're structured in the sense that, well, um, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do. Um, so I think there's two different um, perspectives on it, because I know from a personal perspective, when I first started, I didn't really quite know. And I was just like, mm, I'm not quite sure, really. We're just going to see how this goes. But then the second time around, when I had my sponsor, I was like, well, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. Um, and we kind of worked towards that and said, right, OK, so this is what you need to do. Um, and she did offer me quite a few times, you know, come to the meetings with me, come to the board um, or we can we can go to this meeting, etc. But I must admit, I never really took up on took her up on it purely because of time constraints. You know, I couldn't really do it. But I think it's nice to be able to actually um, and this might be just me personally. I just like to have a plan. I like to look at things in writing and go. And this is what I need to achieve. This is where we need to be. Um, and it's not something that I would ever impose upon a sponsor. You go, you have to do this. Um, I'd let, I do let them take the lead and go, right, tell me what you want. Tell me what you need. But very often, the sponsee feels a little bit lost. So you kind of like go, OK, well, is this what you want to do? Where do you want to be? We need to do this, this and this to be able to get to that. So it's trying to give them a helping hand to be able to get them to where, um, like, so one of my sponsor, sponsees, um, they're quite happy where they are. They're just, they kind of just, when we spoke about it, it kind of, it came across that, you know, th they were still studying, um, the job that they'd just got into, it was fairly new, like they've only just got it. So, you know, my advice to that person was just stay in that role for a little while, get your experience, get your studying going, um, don't feel ready to move just yet. You know, you're not in a hurry to be anywhere. Um, and it's that because sometimes it's quite often that thing because, you know, sometimes people in their heads are thinking, I just need to be here. I need to be doing this. And it's like, well, no, but you just need to be a little bit more stable right now. And, you know, and I remember when I had a mentor, um, which was way before the sponsorship thing came through, um, 
and I, I think I told her that I'd, I'd gotten um, a certain certain role and she went right you need to stay there for two years I didn't listen to her <laughs> she told me you need to stay here for two years you need to get all your experience and ground yourself um and I think that that reflection of the fact that you know that does actually help a person is quite realistically um the right thing at that point in time for someone so you know they that that sponsee might not really need me um for the next six months ten, nine months because they're just getting themselves adjusted or they're doing their their studying in the background and that's fine you know it, it's just a quiet relationship um but I think it's also knowing that they can reach out if they ever need you for any any um any little bits of advice or they might want to go for a job and they might just say well what do you think should I do it or do we think I've got the experience for it and that's when I think you know that that comes back up alive again and you know you start talking to them so I think there are different 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 people need different approaches I would say yeah, no, I think obviously everything you said is really important. And it also depends on who your sponsee is in their journey, isn't it? If they're just starting out, if they're quite senior but still looking for some advice, you sort of cater your responses accordingly. Um, but I did like the point that you said in, in your previous bit about being invested, because if you're signing up for this, you have to be invested, don't you? You have to make time. Um, and we shouldn't just be sort of deprioritizing this all the time because other work pressures are coming in so how you keep that protected bit in your diary isn't it so that's really important because that individual needs to feel valued um and that your time is important for them as well as for you uh, yeah because you know i learn from my sponsors all the time so it's a two-way conversation absolutely but thank you that's really really helpful yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for your feedback as well. Um, you're right. It, I, it, it's hard, isn't it, sometimes? Because we, we all work in high pressured environments and, and things can always come come in knocking on our door right at the last minute and just like, oh, what do I do kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I just genuinely believe it's really important if you said that, you know, you're going to show up and please do show up um, because you just don't want them to lose faith in you. Um, Richard? Thanks. Um really interesting to hear the you know your 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 views on it i mean i suppose um you know in particular the, the opening sessions i would you know i would i would have thought everybody did that but may, maybe not um, and so you know if my sponsee is you know, i am you know, get, want to get to know them a bit and and i'm very upfront about what i can and can't do i suppose in terms of you know whether the, you know, if they don't not know what they want then i'm i'm not going to tell them i think um because that's just that's just how i am so you know i think you need to be very clear that you know, and i'm very happy you know to say if it's not working fine you know no there's no you know um pressure at all and i, I won't take the least offense if i'm not the right person for you that's absolutely fine but um you know, I I'm, see it as being there to support them and, um, you know, in, in whichever way I can. But um, I don't think, that, you know, it, it, it's not in my nature to sort of be at all di di dictating what they should do and whether they should have a plan or not. So um, I would, I, I would, you know, I, I'm quite happy to say don't and just to bumble yeah. along a bit. And, it, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it, it, it yeah. doesn't. So, but that's just, that's just, a, a good question of the fit really so if, if people want a sponsor that's going to be more driving and directive that's great but it, it's probably not me so yeah courses for courses, for courses a bit. It, yeah it is and I, you, you're absolutely right you know everyone's different so having that that different approach um and if that's the kind of person that you are i think it's but it's good if they can they can at least come to you for advice you know and, and they know that actually yeah. you know this is going to work for me and this yeah. is not going to yeah. work for me so yeah. it, i think it's um and 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 i also i do think that a sponsor 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 relationship can be quite difficult sometimes because mm. it's just two complete strangers and um i think someone said once before where you know it is just another relationship um where two people come together and they might be complete strangers and it's you know do you fit together as as an as two individuals yeah. Yeah. um and you can can you make it work as a relationship and you know it's a working relationship so it, it's really important that we kind of give it our best shot but at the same time if it doesn't work then all 
with all due respect, yeah. you kind of like go, well, actually, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to be the right person for you for what you're looking yeah. for. So there is an, and it's, it, I think that honesty is just really important because you just don't want that sponsee to be feeling like, well, actually, I'm here, but I just don't know whether this is, mm. this is working or not. Whether, you know, at, at the end of it, if they might reflect, they go, well, I haven't gotten anywhere with it. Um, and, and it's important from both sides, you know, to actually speak up about it and go, um, we, maybe we just need to actually try something different or try yeah. someone new. Yeah. But yes, but, but thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Just on, I mean, in terms of you know keeping to appointments and things. I mean, I you know I expect the small seed to sort of you know, give them access to my diary and they make the appointments. But um, I'm very rarely would you actually cancel them. I think so. We do have to commit the time. Yeah. No. Absolutely. That's right. Um, that's great. Thanks, Richard. Um, James. Ah, uh, thanks very much. Um, for speaking to us this morning i think i'm quite new to this um sponsorship side being a sponsor um and i hearing you know the way you've described relationships and the way you approach it's kind of reaffirmed that i've done i've done some of the things quite right that's all right i feel like i'm on the right track with a lot of it so um that's really helpful thank you and i have found you know as just said that kind of relationship merging kind of towards a, a mentoring relationship as well um so it, i found it, it kind of for myself quite an interesting experience to be part of um, I've done some mentoring internally um, and I wasn't sure whether the sponsorship relationship going down that route was kind of the right way to go, but it seems to be. Um, and I've also found that kind of when your sponsor's um, applying for a job and all of a sudden it's kind of like, okay, I need to act quite quickly here and provide support and information, but you also don't want to bombard them with a huge amount of stuff. I found that quite difficult, to be honest. Um, because it's so it's so easy and so tempting, you know, with, with you know, with all say the experiences we've had, we've built up a lot over time. So you could kind of like jump on and drop it on someone. And I, I think we'll have to try and kind of stage that a little bit and trying to feel a way through. Um, but no, listen to what you said, it's been really great. Thank you. Yeah. No, I had anyone here been a sponsee then at all? Is it just no? Oh, Aisha's been a sponsee. So Aisha probably gets it when she's probably had the same experiences from once well she's had experiences from both sides um oh Ghazala, have you been a sponsee as well yeah i'm currently a sponsee on the sponsorship scheme yeah yeah i think i think it's an interesting um, um perspective and james you're right i think when you're new to the sponsor um relationship and and i'm going to also pick up on what jazz said about the fact that it turns into a mentoring i think when you've been with a person long enough and you feel like you've established a connection um and you've walked them through like the basics if you like um and then it does naturally i think evolve into a mentoring relationship but I, when you first start out i think it for me is always important to scope out the person and go right you know are we going to be able to am i going to be able to help you is the first thing that i actually ask the question really you know what can i give you what 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 skills do i have that actually can help you um and sometimes i think when i when they listen to me and they they listen to how my journey has been because my journey is not hasn't been straightforward um they actually kind of like oh yeah you know what i relate to what you've done i relate to where you are and i think that's where it all comes back from because it's like you haven't taken the straightforward journey you know you did this or you did that and this you know and and i and I can see how you have gone from strength to strength and I want to use that. And that's really the sponsor's way of looking at it. Go, well, you know, you, you're not your basic bog standard kind of person who's, you know, just gone from going to university, got into a job and then moved up. You know, my, my journey hasn't been like that. So when I share with them my journey, I think it does help them a little bit because the people that have been um, paired up with me, it's they've probably not the bog standard where they've kind of like gone, oh, well, I went to university and now I've got to do it. You know, I'm going to do it this. Um, and I don't want to use the word conventional, but it, it does become a bit, you know, the university conventional method. Um, so I think they relate to that and they go, actually, you know what, you've got loads of experience in different types of things um, or you know what it's like. So I want to be able to, you know, be, I can come to you and you'll understand where I'm coming from. Um, and quite often, I think they are looking for someone to be able to, relate to them and be on their wavelength to go yeah you know you get it you understand if I've got issues or something's not working right because I, I think considering the fact that we're all seniors and we all we, we've worked in the NHS we all know that there are barriers just full stop you know there are barriers um 
and getting through and past those barriers, especially when you're um, from a protected characteristics, it is really challenging. Uh, and, you know, you have to work twice as hard. Um, and when they see me as a person who has a protected characteristic and they've got past that barrier, it's like, well, how did you do it? You know, how did you get to where you were? And it's that sharing of the journey to go, well, actually, she did it. So I don't see why I can't do it. Um, and, I, and I think those are the kind of perspectives as a sponsor sponsor relationship that for them to have that confidence in in the NHS as well, in one NHS finance, because it's been so long that there are certain characteristics that have been overlooked that we're trying to correct this and, you know, sponsor sponsor relationships are one way of trying to actually do it. So it's providing that value to them to go, we can help you break that barrier and we can help you overcome it. Um, and I think that that for me is really the, the sole purpose of it. Like it's just, we can help you, you know, I want you to develop, I want you to progress, I want you to do this and I'll do everything in my power to help you to get to it. So really that's what where it comes from for me. Um, sorry, Karen's been waiting, go on Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think um, everything that everything that everybody's saying is really relevant and um, every sponsee um, will be different, won't they? Um, but I think there are a few things that are standing out for me that um, people are saying. And um, so so not being not being precious if the sponsor and sponsee relationship isn't going isn't going as well as it could be and if your sponsee and i think it's checking in with your sponsee every now and again just to ask them and say is this working for you um and if they say no it's not quite right and then would you like to find another sponsor then that's absolutely fine and i think and i think doing that and checking in with each other is really important um as you go through your journey yeah um, absolutely yeah yeah i think i think the other thing is um because there's been um i think it was yaz that's jazz jazz that said that um that um sometimes sponsors um don't write anything down at the beginning um it's it's kind of a more fluid relationship um my preference is always to write something down um at the beginning but again like richard i would not expect to do that i would expect the sponsee to do a lot of the work themselves um and i think it's quite important to write something down because what we've not talked about is ending the sponsee sponsor relationship um and this is um I think the the whole relationship is meant to last about 40 uh, 18 months um and um it's quite important to get to the end of that 18 months um and actually say right compared to what we wrote down in terms of your overarching objectives where have we got to what have we achieved um and what you would what you would hope for is you would hope that you'd achieved most of them because you've helped them through that. That's what our jobs are as sponsors. Um, so we're, we're here more than mentors, really, because we're here to promote them. We're here to sell their name and their expertise and their skills, um, to get some job opportunities for them. Um, we're, help, we're here to help them progress um, which is a little bit more than a mentor because mentoring is just about giving advice um, and you might move on to a mentoring relationship afterwards um, but I think you've got to give yourself that 18 months and you've got to achieve something and the writing the plan down is a way of ending your relationship as well because otherwise it can go on and on and on um and then you don't make yourself available for other sponsees then because in my in my working um in my working life i can 
I can only have one sponsee at any one time because I haven't got any time for anything else. So so you can't carry on with that sponsee because then you're not making it, making yourself available for another sponsee to help somebody else. So you've got to end that relationship at some point. And I think for some sponsees, that's quite hard. Um, so, that, so there's that. Um, and the and the barriers thing that you've just been talking about is like super important because that's why we're here. We're we're here to break down those barriers and make sure that they can get through those glass ceilings. Um, and that's really important, I think, from our role. So that's yeah. just what I've heard, but that's just me playing it back. Um, no, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Karen. And you, you're right. I think you know there is supposed to be an end date to the relationship and and but doesn't always work like that I think there's a lot of relationships that do continue might be you know like they might say after you know you, you having assessed it after 15 months do you want to continue it or do you are you happy to be able to like say right I'm done now you know I feel like I'm I've got where I want to go um or I thought I would achieve this and, and maybe I'm not there yet but maybe I just need to take a break for now um, and come back and, you know, like, so, so my, like what the example I used before about um, one of them coming to me and my sponsor and going, well, you know, I've just got this new job and um, I'm still studying. So for, for me there, my advice to them was, well, just stay where you are, you know, the year or two, or two, it will, you just need to embed that knowledge and work with that. Um, but in the meantime, if you've got anything, then do come to me. Um, and, and I think it is one of those where then, they don't really link in with me, that person, because they at the moment they're still learning what they want to learn. Um, and if I've, I've gave them a few initial pieces of advice to say, well, if you want to do this, then do this or network with this. And they've kind of taken that away and gone, right, okay, that's fine, I'll work with that. But I think at the same time, um, some some people might not necessarily feel ready to kind of like go, oh, actually, I want to end this relationship. You know, um, I, I'm going to sign off now. Um, but then equally, I think when, when NHS Finance, you have got mentors. So I think you can, as a sponsor, go, right, actually, well, I, maybe now would be the time for you to become, go with a mentor as opposed to having a sponsor, because I won't be able to provide the valuable feedback or, or valuable constructive information or, or anything that they need. Um more than a mentor would so that relationship then does change but it's whether you want to keep them on you know informally as a mentor as well it, I think those, those kind of things that can be talked through really um with you with your sponsee uh, sorry Alec, uh, Alice you've been waiting a while thanks uh, Rizwana um so I'm I'm actually probably the, the one of the longest standing sponsees in this uh, program so I was like one of the first ones um to have done this and I, I actually still have the same sponsor. So, yeah. So, yeah, way I, more, assuming, so, yeah with, in the Northwest, you and Aisha, wasn't it? Was it the first? Yeah. So, myself yeah. and Aisha was one of the first in the country to join this program. Um, and um, until last month, I, well, I stepped down to give other people opportunities, but I was the network lead as well. So, the Northwest Sponsor Network Lead. But um, in regards to the two year thing, I think it, it, for me, it's very much a it's a gauge, it's a, it's a, you know, some people might need it for a year, some people might need it for more. Uh, I think also, you know, like you said, Karen, you know, there's a bit of mentoring in that, there's a bit of coaching in that, it's a bit of everything. And it's, for me, the way I see it, it's almost like it's coaching, mentoring, sponsoring, plus it's all, you know, it's that extra, it's, you know, it's the extra thing that you go ahead and do for that sponsee that a mentor would not do because they would, talk to you in a way where they give you some advice but you have to go away and find it and do it don't you um but in regards to the time frame I think everyone is different um every one see what they need is different what I needed back in 2019 is a lot different to what I use my um what, what I do with my sponsor now you know five years later type of thing um we do we still have our monthly meetings but sometimes we say well I don't need it this month I'm okay you know that's fine there are times that I've gone through where like applying for a job or applying for the uh, inspiring deputy sort of uh, course, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I've got this to do. I need some help. You know, it's like that. And it's like, you know, you end up potentially talking to each other a lot more than you would. Um, so I think it really does depend on, on what you need. But I think it was really good when even back then, back in 2019, we would sort of like our first meeting was very much established. What is it roughly? that you want to do and achieve 
it's not exact some people will know I want to do this this and this and this way and that way but it's like well actually have you thought of these other methods and these other um routes as well you know um but it is building that relationship and it's building the trust so um communication commitment those two things for me as a sponsee is very key now as a spot as the network lead the amount of times that I've heard from sponsees saying oh they, they keep cancelling I can't get through to the PA blah, blah, blah you know that type of thing and I keep saying keep trying keep doing it if you're really struggling then I'll step in as the as the network lead you know to help with pushing that or we can find you another sponsor you know um but yeah it does it does make a difference because you kind of start losing that trust in that person um but I think um mm. like I said you know I think for sponsors I think you've just got to really remember why is it that you as sponsors have decided to be a sponsor you know you're there to help you were, you wanted to help and that's why isn't it you wanted to make a difference and you know just keep kind of going well I'm here but you, you've got to, you've got to, it's a bit of that give and take. Um, and I think one of the things about um, writing things down, I agree, you both need to, it's probably both sides need to write things down. I always say that at the end of every meeting, there should probably be an action for both parties. So one for the, at least one for the sponsor and one for the sponsee type of thing. That is something where you then come back the following month or following six weeks, however, the next time you meet, then you can go oh we've done this since or even dropping an email in between then and say oh yeah that's been done do you know what I mean then it it, it gives that sponsee a bit of confidence oh yeah I'm doing it but also it gives the sponsor a bit of confidence that that sponsee isn't just trying to have an easy ride that they are doing things that they you know for it as well because I always say nothing is a given you know if you if if you're goal for being part of the sponsorship program is to um get your next promotion it's not just going to come on a plate you've got to work at it you know and I think that's the thing isn't it is that both sides are working at it and helping yeah no absolutely you're right Alice um that there's a lot of there about the expectations that, that are being set from from a sponsor and sponsor point of view um and, and one of the things that I also wanted to add to that really is that sometimes um you know, a sponsee, they might they might fe be feeling a little bit irate about something or they might be a little bit upset. Um, and it's important also to be able to have that confidentiality for them to be able to come to you and speak to you um, and to share their concerns or, you know, things that might be happening, which necessarily might not feel fair or, or you know, there's, there's obviously, there's always bureaucracy, there's always politics, etc. But they might be feeling slightly... Um, sidelined in some ways so I think from a sponsee and sponsor relationship perspective it's really important to be able to feel that they've they, they you've got their back as well in the sense that they can come to you and speak to you confidentially and you can be you're, you're able to actually um have their have their back and and make sure that you know you're able to give them that advice and and, and keep it confidential so I do think that that's also really important I've, I've gone to my um sponsor many a times um when I've been feeling a little bit like or something, you know, something didn't quite work like I thought it would or, or something's not right, um, but have a bit of a rant or a mourn or something. And that's fine. You know, you can do that. And, you know, from a sponsor, sponsor perspective, I can imagine a sponsor going, I want to be able to go to my sponsor and I want to be able to tell them something and not feel like, are they going to go and tell someone else? So, it's, you know, is this going to go out somewhere else where I don't want it to? Quite often, a sponsor and a sponsee, a sponsee won't want a sponsor that's within their own organization and that's one of the reasons they actually state that they don't they don't because they feel like it won't it won't remain that relationship where there's that confidentiality um and impartiality as well um so it's important as a sponsor that we have that um with that relationship to be able to say that sorry go on jazz no it just prompted me when you talked about that confidentiality point as well i think one of the first things I always say to whoever I'm with is say, this is a safe space. Whatever you say here stays between us. Uh, I sort of give that guarantee right up front to make sure that they're honest in what yes. they say. And like yes. I said, when they may be struggling with something and they just want to come back for a bit of advice. Yeah, that is really important, actually, that safe space conversation. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, and I saw, I think that just builds on the relationship as well, that they feel that they can come to you and they can tell you something that might not necessarily be. Um, I, I'm just kind of looking for the right words because I think we all feel like we've been there at some point or, or other in our lives, um, in you know, in our work-related environments where we feel like maybe, you know, it's been disadvantaged at some perspective. Um, uh, you know, we feel like we haven't had anyone to complain to, or or there isn't someone that you can actually tell, and and it's gonna it's gonna be able to not go anywhere. So and but then you want them to feel that actually they can come to you and they can talk to you. So just having that for them is, I think, is really important, and it will definitely you know progress your relationship as well from that perspective. Uh, Aisha. Um, hi, thank you so much. I am currently a sponsee and I guess my question is really simple, but I was hoping to maybe get a few perspectives. Um, I'm looking at when, when to become a sponsor, um, when's the right time and, and yeah, what, what are the sort of gauge points to make sure that, yeah, now's the right time to go ahead and take that step because it would be my way of giving back and sort of passing on what I've gained from it. Um, <laughs> Alice, thank you. <laughs> does anyone else have any any sort of reply? Yeah, does anyone want to, uh, want to feed back to Aisha? I was just going to say, when is it ever a right time or when is it not? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think one of the things that you always have to remember is that that there might be some things that you can't help them on, but I'm sure that you might know people who could as well. So although when you have that discussion with a sponsee and they say, this is what I want to achieve and this is what I want to do, and you go, oh, well, I can help you on that bit. I'm not sure about that other bit. Then, you know, within your networks, you will know people who might be able to help with the part B part, but yet you can still be their sponsor. And then it's just bringing in your your networks and, and help from outside so don't worry about not being able to help with everything because there, I don't think there is anyone that could potentially do that you know in, realistically um, and what they need one at one point in their career and their uh, sponsorship journey might be different to what they need you know for two years down the line or even two months down the line. Thanks Alice. Uh, Jess? I think I'll probably go back to one of the points you made, Rizwana, about time and commitment. I should just make sure that you have that and that you can make yourself available. Because I think if it's a first time role for you, uh, you'll gain a lot just by having a dedicated input into it. Because if, you, if you're stretched and you don't do that, I don't think you'll experience being a sponsor to the right degree that you need to. So I would just say, just sense check. Um, what other commitments you've got and if you can make yourself available in terms of time go for it I think it'll be brilliant yeah thank you Jazz. Uh, Gazala yeah my question is um, is it firstly possible to be on a sponsor uh, relationship as well as a sponsor relationship two separate things and has anybody done that and what um, has their experience been yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I'm currently in a sponsor sponsor relationship where I am the sponsee. Um, and also the the other way around where I'm I am a sponsor. So it is absolutely possible. And I also want to add to um for Aisha is to say that Aisha is always um a learning relationship because you as a sponsor will develop as well as them. Um, and that's purely because you will also be on a learning journey with them. I always believe that, you know, we we don't know everything, like Alice said, you know, we won't always have all the answers, but I, it's a really good platform to be able to get the person to reflect and to think, right, okay, well, I don't have the answer to that, but let's see how can we approach this? Or I can ask a few people, um, but like, so for example, I, you know, we have, um, I have another person in my team who is a sponsor for someone. And that person wanted, um, their sponsee wanted um, shadowing or training opportunities just to basically have it coming into our team and having a look at what certain people were doing. Um, so she kind of reached out and just said, well, can, can anyone accommodate this? You know, can, can we do this? And yeah, absolutely, you know, bring them in. Um, so it's, you know, they might not be able, to, they might not be able to do it themselves, but they, they know people. So you as a sponsor, um, I think it's also important for you to feel 
confident and, and comfortable with yourself to go, you know what, I've got loads to actually give back. You know, it's time for me to be able to give back. And I, I don't think there's any definitive time where you go, um, right, that's it. You know, this is I'm at the end of my journey. Um, but I think one of the things I would say is that I think your journey as a learning person would probably be a little bit more um, plateaued. You know, you, you you may be in a in a position where you're quite um, you're quite happy where you are in your role. Um, you have got some developing, but you're doing that in the background because we all, we all develop, I suppose. You know, as as we go along, um, so you're not as um, you're not as as in need, if you like, of a sponsor um as you probably have been a year ago or something like that so it is I think it's a personal gauge for everyone really you know no one really everyone has their own um areas where they think okay now I'm ready now you know I can give back um so I hope that helps um yeah, thank you, and Ghazala yes you know we we all we're, we're in relationships where um we are sponsors and sponsees and it works for 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 quite a few of us that have been doing it um and I hope that helps as well um sorry I'm just going to come to Neeraj who's got his hand up thank you um I am a sponsee and a sponsor uh, as well so I've learned a lot from my sponsors to be fair I have two sponsors so far the first one was uh, Osman Nazi and the second one is uh, Rakesh Patel. Both of them got different style, and I've learned a lot from them. Up to a point, I basically I felt that um, I can make best use of that and then best sign up as a sponsor. So for me, I didn't jump into being a sponsor, but I did know in terms of what it was, uh, how to go about it. But I've learned uh, a few techniques, but most importantly, I say both of them had different style altogether. Uh, but some of you basically put in in terms of making sure you you know your objectives, you write down what they are. So that basically definitely helped me as well through that journey. So um, going through the uh, sponsor program, basically I built up my confidence because um, I also want to be a sponsor to make sure that I can contribute. I can basically, uh, positive contribution is basically important, but also making sure that you've got the skill set to do so. And I know uh, one, one NHS file has got lots of um, uh, sessions them so you know to, to for you just to learn in terms of what you need to know how to create a uh, safe space which is very important making sure there's a two-way communication piece as well so lots involved not just about jumping to be a sponsor for the sake of it but lots of preparatory work required and it generally uh, um, uh, rewarding towards end because I do you learn through that journey and process as well yeah, absolutely, Neeraj. Um, and you're right. I think it's it's a learning journey for for um, and you you know you will you will learn from your sponsors because you will understand their styles and go well. Actually, you know what? When I had this issue, that's this is how they dealt with it. Um, but you will also at the same time as you as you go along, you'll develop your own. You know, if you decide to become a sponsor. Um, so it is it's it and that's why I say it's a learning journey for 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 all of us. It's a sponsor and a sponsor learning journey. Um, but I, I do think that that will help as you go forward because you will have gained lots of lots of skills from that in itself as a as a sponsor and, and learning from them. Um, I think we're pretty much at the end of our time, aren't we, and Sasha? We've got like five minutes. I don't know if anyone's got anything to add. Um, oh, that's great. Um, so I'm going to kind of um, call it at an end. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here and listening to me rabbit on. I hope everyone's found it helpful. Um, if anyone wants to ask me any questions, that's absolutely fine. If you want to link in outside, that's absolutely fine. Um, but it's been great. Um, and having the positive contribution as well from you guys. It's been so nice to be able to have it to be interactive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.